here to the Okuni Center and thank you to the County of Hawaii for uh, kind of hosting us and allowing us to use this room. Uh, this is one of two meetings on the island. We're also going over to Kona and meeting over at the Natural Energy Lab, which is a sister agency to us under the Department of Business, Economic Development and Tourism. Uh, this particular project that we're going to be discussing and getting input from the public tonight uh, is basically looking at our land use uh, process in Hawaii, and specifically Chapter 205, which is the land use commission process. And, you know, over the years, um, in fact, over the decades, there's always been calls to like, abolish the Land Use Commission. Um, right? The process takes too long, and that adds to the non-affordability of, of housing. Um, doesn't protect our environment that all that great. Right? There's a whole lot of different um, uh, uses that have kind of creeped into the agricultural district and all that. So we hear that because the, land, the Office of Planning is also a party to the land use process, the land use commission process. So we hear all the comments, right? We, and some of the comments that we've been hearing, they're not new. I mean, I've been around in planning for about 25 years in the state. And I've heard it, I used to work for the land use commission. I heard it back then, right, as a staff planner. And I'm hearing some of the same stuff today. So what the Office of Planning wanted to do uh, under our uh, mandate of our check of our office to look into these these things and provide guidance and advice to um, the governor, the director of DBED, and also the legislature, if needed, uh, was to look at this issue. Is there something wrong about the system, uh, the land use system? Is there something working? And basically, you know, what would be an ideal system, right? And that's what we've been um, kind of going through with a bunch of stakeholders that Rodney uh, Funakoshi, our land use division administrator, will describe. But before we get into that, let me introduce uh, my staff that is here today. Uh, Rodney Funakoshi is our land use division administrator. Uh, Ruby Edwards um, is one of our planners in the land use division under Rodney. Katie Mineo is also here. She's another planner with our land use division. Uh, I do have Pro Yamamoto from the Department of Agriculture. Uh, he you know, wanted to come over and kind of do the meeting statewide as, as we go around and, and gather input. And we also have Mickey Lee, who's going to facilitate. Uh, so with that, I um, wanted to welcome all of you guys again. And I'm going to turn it over to Mickey, who's going to walk us through this evening's uh, agenda. Let's see, he gave us an overview of why we're here. I'm going to do sort of housekeeping things. I think all of you signed in. Uh, if you didn't leave us your email address and you think you want to stay engaged and involved, please leave it on the way out. Uh, we'll let you know what is happening along the way. Um, Oh, you, you covered a lot of my business, you know. That's cool. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, okay. So we're going to actually hear a little bit about you before we turn it over to the presentation. So just real quickly, your first name and what brings you out tonight. And I'm going to start with the gentleman in the back. Uh, oh, oh, okay. I'm just, yeah, I thought this was part of the deal, uh, meeting, but, uh, but you just, heard there was free food, so. No, it's just, uh, <laughs> I was trying to plan more food while I was like, uh, cheese off the land, but uh, I was just all kind of come to them just to you know, when we put a part of land and natural resources in, uh, was defined uh, using the parcel as far as uh, doing the culture and we started putting things on the land that was uh, out of the world. Uh, uh, I'm Carrie. I record things and put them on YouTube. All kinds of public meetings. Is that something you're not comfortable with? No, not Would it be okay if she didn't shoot you and just sort of kept focus on us? Carrie, is that okay? Okay. Thanks, Thanks for asking the question. Your name and what name do I do? Sorry. Hello, my name is Tara, and I'm here to learn more about um, agro. 
My name is Ken Church. Um, I'm here to discuss certain issues relating to DLNR OCCL um, that I haven't been able to resolve at any other level. And it was my impression when I read your guidelines about what this is about, that you're a body that oversees all of the other bodies. So I'm hoping that my concerns are heard and, and passed on. And then um, when we're done with introductions, I think Rodney can give you a little context for the relationship between DLNR and Office of Planning. Are you going to aim your camera this way? Not at you, Amy. Thank you. Catch me when I'm pretty. Um, you always pretty, baby. <laughs> uh, my name's Amy. I work with council member Aaron Chong. Mm -hmm. He has to be someplace else this evening, so he asked me to sit in and listen. Great. Thanks. Thank you. My name is Susan Lancaster. I'm a real estate broker and just kind of involved in real estate for a long time. And just, it's a confusing issue for me, so I just catch whatever I can when I can. So. Uh, Jim McCulley, uh, I had agricultural land along the Hilo Coast in the 93, and then again in 2004 to 2008, I had a, a land use commission boundary amendment mm -hmm. action, mm -hmm. uh, which ultimately uh, failed. Uh, I expended a significant amount of money, went into a, a tremendous disconnect between the intent and the actual implementation of the rules and the law. And uh, I'd like to have the system rationalized for everybody in the state of Hawaii and not just uh, the predicament I found myself in with 100 year agricultural land that um, they refused to uh, change the boundary to agriculture for conservation when there was no conservation function. So that's why I did. But I just got texted, I have to leave, so I'm going to oh. submit written testimony Please do. Uh, to your office. Okay. And you gave us your, your email address, yeah, right? Yeah, so, okay. I'd like, and if there's follow-up meetings, or Yeah, follow and then also, I believe in your handout is a reference to our website, and right. as of Friday, we're going to be posting a lot of information out that will duplicate what we're seeing here, yeah. so you can stay involved. I'd like to thank the office for finally doing this after all these years, and mm -hmm. I think that kind of reflects our previous governor, mm -hmm. Abercrombie, and his commitment to land reform, which mm -hmm. I appreciate. Yeah. Well, thank thanks you. for being here. I'm Deborah Ward, and I'm a member of Sierra Club. Um, I've seen the Land Use Commission be uh, extremely effective in protecting land at an appropriate if, you know, times when, when counties might have made those decisions. And I'm really interested in protecting the best of what's going on instead of letting it all go. So I want to be sure it's not just done away with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm Harden, and also on the board of Sierra Club, and also concerned that we preserve protections for our land. I'm Nancy Cook Lauer. I'm with West Hawaii today, uh, Hilo Bureau, and um, I know you're all going to be in West Hawaii tomorrow. This issue that's very important to West Hawaii, especially uh, with its growth, and, um, and I don't mind Gary, you can shoot me all day. <laughs> Just a couple more housekeeping things. We're scheduled to end at uh, about 7.30. Just know that. And you probably know this, but the restrooms are right here. So you don't have to go walking around. I'm going to turn it over to Rodney. Do you want to talk about that DLNR OCCL point? I mean, how closely is this the same thing that we're going to be talking about? Yeah, well, I think it's the same thing. Probably very little to do with DLNR. <clears throat> this is about the state land use process, which is uh, we deal primarily with changes from state conservation to urban or agriculture to urban, sometimes vice versa, very rarely. But then, <clears throat> if it's only an issue on conservation land, uh, it's under the purview of the Board of Land and Natural Resources. So the state of Hawaii. It's a department, it's one, Conservation District is one of the four that uh, is overseen by the Land Use Commission at Chapter 205. But 
uh, issues within the conservation district are handled uh, solely by the board of that if I may prevail on, as I go through this, I'm going to make numerous references to 205 and the requirements of it. But it will begin in a different process to get you to that end. Okay. It's four pages. I can read it. I don't know if it's going to take 10 minutes or 12 minutes. But okay. Nonetheless, it's, it is what it is. And I can also hand out for your perusal after I leave. And with consideration, I may pass it out to others that are interested. Sure. Yeah, by all means. Uh, but if it is more pages, uh, a brief summary of it all. <clears throat> okay, thank you very much for coming. Uh, what I'm going to do is run through some slides uh, that basically gives you an overview of the state land use process in Hawaii. So I sort of got it like brand use planning level one, but hopefully it'll give you uh, some context for what we're doing, uh, from which we would like to get uh, your opinion. So we'll cover why we're here, uh, what the state land use project's about, give you an overview of the state land use system, and talk about today's meeting and what's next. <clears throat> so why we're here, we want to get input from stakeholders, and stakeholders are those uh, who have an interest or have been involved, as well as the public, on how the land use system is working. And I'm going to go through to explain what our land use system involves. We have been working on this um, for most of this past year. Uh, we have formed a group of uh, select stakeholders, uh, including state agencies, county planning departments, uh, environmental, civic, uh, development groups as well to give us some input on some of the issues on this process. And what does the Office of Planning do? We are the state's planning agency that's responsible for statewide comprehensive and regional planning. We have an interest specifically with respect to land use in advancing the intent of the law. And this is our mission statement. Preserve, protect, and encourage the development of lands in the state for uses to which they are best suited for the public welfare. The Office of Planning represents the state's interest in land use matters before the State Land Use Commission. And this involves district boundary amendments, Declaratory ruling, special permits, and important agricultural land. We work with other state agencies and counties to evaluate whether proposed projects heard by the Land Use Commission further the intent of the state land use law. In the Office of Planning's work over the years, uh, questions have been raised about the system, and now we want to know, is the system working? And then how might it be improved? And the cornerstone is the state's land use law, enacted in 1961. It was pioneering back then. Uh, it's codified as Chapter 205, Hawaii Revised Statutes. And it was enacted in response to uh, scattered development, uh, development on prime agricultural land, uh, population and economic growth, uh, real estate speculation, and calls for greater role for the state in land use management. The framework for land use management are four districts in which all lands in the state are classified. And this is the urban district where you have city-like uses regulated by county. Rural, small farms, low density, residential. Agriculture, cultivation, other agriculture-related uses. And then finally, conservation. Forest reserves, watersheds, other natural resource areas. Yeah, the land 
Ethics Commission consists of nine members uh, appointed and who serve as volunteers, and they're supported by the staff. They decide on uh, amendments to the state land use districts, uh, special permits for unusual and reasonable uses greater than 15 acres in the agricultural and rural districts. Less than 15 acres, uh, the county planning commission rules on those. Designation of important agricultural lands and declaratory rulings to clarify points of law. The counties are responsible to enforce district classifications and uses in the urban, rural, and agricultural districts. That the conservation district, as mentioned, is under the purview of the Board of Land and Natural Resources. And over the years, there's been a number of changes in the land use law um, without very many significant ones. But, um, in 1975, um, the process was changed to contested case hearings. And basically, that's a quasi-judicial court-like process of hearing petitions for district boundary amendments. And other changes over the years. One year requirement, time limit, and then uh, important, important agricultural lands process was enacted in 2005. <clears throat> the state <coughs> statewide system has four major components. There's state planning and land use, there's county planning and land use, environmental review, and appeals process. I'll note that not all projects trigger all four components. From the state standpoint, um, you have the Hawaii State Plan and state functional plans would provide that planning framework. The land use side is determined by the state land use law and the state conservation district by the Department of Land and Natural Resources. Individual agencies have their own plans. And state agencies also do a variety of development permits and environmental permits. And the county component following the state plans are general plans and community plans, zoning permits, subdivisions, grading, environmental, and building permits. Each county develops and approves their general plan and community development plan each county determines their local zoning and permitting regulations. Environmental reviews, um, Chapter 343, Hawaii Environmental Policy Act, to analyze environmental, social, economic impacts of proposed developments, recommend mitigation measures, and it functions as an important public disclosure and public review process for impacts before agencies decide. And this is administered by the State Office of Environmental Quality Control. After uh, approvals, state laws, state and county laws provide for an appeal process. So environmental documents can be appealed to court, as can be state land use decisions, and as well as county land use decisions, zone changes. Some of your typical project approval process can take many years, particularly for major developments, starting with environmental review, EISs are normally done at a very early stage, state land use, district boundary amendments, county plan and zone change as needed, various uh, zoning permits and facility infrastructure permits, and then <coughs> subdivision grading building permits that you know, can take seven to ten years. State role is involved with in agency facilities and infrastructure reviews, and in particular, our focus at this particular um, what we're doing in this particular study and review has to do with the Land Use Commission district boundary process. And so, what is this process? And this is a uh, flowchart I'm doing, also in the handout. 
but it begins with someone filing a petition to change the boundary from one of the four districts, usually it's from agriculture to urban, possibly conservation to urban. Um, you file a petition, uh, usually it has an EA or an EIS, and once it's deemed complete, you have a hearing process, and it follows a court-like contested case proceeding where you have present witnesses, exhibits, uh, parties can intervene, and then you have uh, hearings where those are presented, you have opportunities for cross-examination, and there are findings that result in a decision and order. That's your basic process for a history boundary. Timing initially determined by the petitioner and the Land Use Commission has one year to make a decision. Statewide, um, these are the percentages in the various uh, districts. Very small percentage, um, urban, hardly any rural. I'm sorry, this is 1969. And this shows the changes um, over the past 40 plus 45 years. And so very little change, uh, maybe less than 2% increase in urban. Um, there's hardly any rural. Agriculture has decreased and conservation has pretty much remained the same. And this shows some of the district classifications statewide. The urban areas is the red. It shows a lot of uh, green is your conservation districts and the white areas like agricultural districts. And so even on heavily developed Oahu, uh, only 27% is actually in your urban district. Much less so in terms of urbanization on the neighbor islands. But pretty much there is a roughly 50-50 split of agriculture and conservation land. So this is Maui, and this is Big Island. It's only 2% urban, but that translates to 56,000 acres. But again, um, mostly conservation and agricultural land. Kauai has slightly more conservation and district land. So what, what we've uh, convened here today is to hear uh, whether any of you have any opinions or how you feel the system is working, and whether and how you think it could be improved. And so we're doing this uh, statewide. So we'll be compiling comments uh, in a report prepared by the Office of Planning. I've noted that we have also been meeting with a group of uh, a task force uh, consisting of stakeholders who have um, been uh, deeply involved in the land use process, so you know, we are incorporating comments from our public meetings as well as the task force uh, input uh, into the report. So we hope to come out at least to provide you feedback from our meetings uh, within the next month by mid-January and then thereafter put together a report so we, we hope to complete the report on our findings and recommendations by summer of next year. And you can stay informed by uh, visiting our project website. Uh, it's important that you did sign in, give us a legible email address, and we will uh, keep you posted. We do anticipate uh, probably one, one more uh, public meeting at a minimum to try to get try to get that out statewide, get statewide coverage on that. So, but meanwhile, you can visit our project website and contact me. And that's my email address and telephone number. Same like this, you're going to go around to the different counties? Um, let me clarify that we are doing this on a shoestring shoe budget. <laughs> In-house, actually, is uh, savings is how we're uh, even doing this project. 
And so we're not sure that we'll have money, but what we may do is use uh, media. So one consideration is maybe uh, having videos that can then be fed or you know, distributed for neighbor island and then um, receive input from that media. So it would be similar to a public meeting, but we may not physically be present. So we're looking into that as a more cost-effective means to achieve statewide coverage. <coughs> we have heard concerns, for example, that when I'm going to Molokai and Lanai, and there's only one meeting on a walk and you know, there's people on the North Shore, there's Oahu, and also one that you heard. So, yeah, it's hard for us to do this on a very limited budget. Um, so we will have to explore other means. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so I'm really sorry that Jim had to leave us because he had direct experience in a district boundary amendment process. Just raise of hands, anyone else here who had direct experience in it? Alright, so you know. Yep, yeah, you bought Jim's land. So you know all about it. Okay. Well, that'll probably help us as we go along. So, what we're looking for um, tonight is sort of if you have experience with it, if you've heard about it, what do you think is working and what do you think needs help? So, Question? Yes. Can you uh, talk more about the task force that was just briefly mentioned? Sure. And is there any big island member of this task force? Okay. <clears throat> well, Task force includes um, state agencies, Department of Transportation, Department of Agriculture, uh, Land and Natural Resources, uh, Office of Hawaiian Affairs, um, State Land Use Commission. Um, we have all four county planning departments uh, represented, their directors or deputy directors usually come to our meeting. Um, so from Big Island, Dwayne Kanuha, Bobby Command. Um, come and uh, we have from environmental organizations, uh, Sierra Club, Outlook, <coughs> Civic Business, we have Chamber of Commerce, uh, Building Industry Association, um, Land Use Research Foundation, which represents a large landowners. Um, we have the American Planning Association. American Institute of Architects. That's all that comes to mind. <laughs> but in general, those, so we don't necessarily have um, um, you know, island representatives. So being from the big island, it might be just the planning department mm -hmm. is represented. And, and again, we're looking at, um, although you know, like, some of the major landowners that's represented, or building industry association, you know, they have uh, connections to all counties, and you know, development, of course, the major landowners, and the and so forth, the new developments on all So it's a pretty large task force that we think cuts across a lot of different sectors, but we thought it was important to actually come out to different islands and areas to get more stuff. So we have a good starting point for us with the task force, and let's come out and then hear more from the community themselves. Let me also add that, you know, like you, others have wanted to know more about okay, what has been discussed at these task force meetings. Mm -hmm. And so we have, we will be, within the next week, um, posting the materials and discussion notes from uh, our task force meetings. So that will be uh, posted on our website. Including this slideshow. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I have another question yep. about the task force. I wonder if you think it's um, across the board representation. Because for Native Hawaiian, so it's only one representative, Office of Hawaiian Affairs. As you mentioned, there's two representatives for environmental groups, they're up and out of circle. But for a more business development interest, there's five seats. So do you feel this is um, you know, fair? representation. We are not a voting task force per se. It's mainly to get input. And so um, it's not a matter of we are not trying to achieve necessarily 
uh, <coughs> you know, by both any decision. The rating wanted to receive input from a broad a spectrum uh, that we can. That's a fair. That's a fair point. I wanted to know what the main themes have been in terms of the discussion points. You know, are there are there changes proposed that seem to be carried in some way? Well, what has been discussed is uh, some feel that system works fine as is. Uh, no changes needed. Maybe some minor tweaks that you know people have mentioned um, that there could be you know, better um, notification to the public better opportunity, ways for the uh, public to be involved. Uh, and there's been recommendations that we consider to be fixes to the system rather than um, reform measures. But we've had the, the wide gamut. And so those you know, have ranged from maybe there's a need for more state uh, direction um, to the uh, land use commission so give them more guidance. Lands Commission could use more enforcement powers. Right now, their only op option is what they call or an order to show cause, which is reversion uh, to a former um, Bridge Ironia and Kona is, is the most recent example for, for that. And right now, that's the only enforcement um, tool for the Land Use Commission, and therefore, there's more heavy reliance on the counties for enforcement. But if there were if they have a wider range of tools available for them, then that might be improved. And then there's also feelings that, well, that there's an implication between the county and the state that maybe some of the things can be shifted back to the counties, or maybe the, the process itself shifted to the counties and the state function as an appeals body. So there's different um, suggestions that have been raise that we would be looking at flushing out more in terms of uh, possibilities, pros and cons. We, the, some of the solutions that have been suggested are as diverse as the membership. You know, it just really depends. And so I would say there's no meaning one way or the other. But it's quite likely in our final report that will be reflected. Is that there's not a silver bullet, but maybe there are elements and different things to, to consider. Yes, As a suggestion, it would appear to me that the same process is prescribed for a person with a hundred thousand dollar property as someone with a fifty million dollar development plan. The same burden, the same EA, the same timeline, which frankly is an unfair burden on small property owners. And it ought to be simplified based on the size and scale of the development. It's just plain wrong right now. The little guy doesn't stand a chance. So, um, kind of playing off of this, just other ideas or suggestions about what you know works and you wouldn't want to see changed, and things that you know are a little bit flawed, or very flawed, and need to be fixed. Yes, um, just going back, sorry, on the task force thing, how does one um, become part of the task force? We, we invited people who we thought had um, expertise and experience uh, in the process. So that was a certain timeline that you guys um, we put out? We made decisions for? back yeah. in, like, in the last year, early this year. Beginning of the year. And there's just been a lot of five meetings or something. But, yeah. So then it's leaving it at home. And now does that go to a lot of all different projects? That means you've chosen, like no, you said, and then This was just for this one particular this exercise. And um, if you have an interest in being involved in this conversation more, that this is the opportunity. And then between now and when we finally produce a report, there's still room for input. Um, you signed in now when you came in? Yeah. yeah. To make sure we can stay in touch. What works? What are you fixing? Yes. Um, I was told, tell me if this is correct or not, I was told there's supposed to be a boundary review statewide every five years and that it hasn't been done for 20 years and that this process is kind of being offered as a substitute. Is there any part, part, of that's, that? part of that's right. 
Um, you're the expert. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. Um, there is uh, a law, section 25-18, that requires that the Office of Planning do a periodic review of uh, the districting and classification statewide. And so that relates to the districting and classification. This relates to the process. So um, it's different, but uh, related. And so it's the best way I can explain it. But uh, to answer your question, uh, that is a companion um, project that we are also doing in-house. Exactly reviewing the districting and classification of lands in the state. Not this, what we're here tonight, but there is a companion project exactly doing, and you're right, it has not been done since 1992. And so I apologize on behalf of the state. Uh, it's, it's basically um, a resource constraint. The, it costs, you have to, what was required was not only to do uh, analyses of uh, what's going on, but they also went to see what should appropriately be in agriculture, urban, and what kind of moves make sense to do. That cost uh, well over a million dollars and took four years. And because of the difficulty in doing that, uh, it has been uh, hard to initiate that uh, since. But what we're doing now is uh, more because of uh, improved uh, geographic information system capabilities. We can uh, do more with less. And so we are using that technology to take a look at how the districts, land use districts overlap and uh, with, say, the county plan growth areas, what kinds of developments and how much development is occurring in the agricultural district and where the good agricultural lands are. So those are some of the issues that we're using, we're doing in this companion uh, study that that you're talking about. And would that, the results of that study come out at the same time as this final report, or is it a different pattern? It's the same staff that's doing this. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to do both and uh, try to get those out. This year. Is there public input on the review of the land? Okay, so again, what what is being done on this um, review of the districting and classification is not, uh, we're not recommending changes, boundary changes. So it's more a descriptive analysis rather than prescriptive, what should be. It's more telling the story of what's going on and what it looks like. Somebody might do something. It would be hard to comment except to tell us what other overlays or types of analysis could be done. So those kind of comments uh, we would certainly welcome, but not in the sense of, you know, this should be urban, this should be rural, this should be agricultural, or this shouldn't be agricultural, this should be rural. No, we don't want those kind of comments. But we're not thinking those because it's more water. What's what's being done? So it's a descriptive, uh, right? It's a descriptive uh, preview. Did the law sort of require that you review the boundaries, and now it's four terms later after five? Well, <coughs> what, five, what they say? Yes, we're required to review it, which we are doing. What it says, though, that we may initiate boundary amendments. So it's not a requirement that we amend the boundaries that we be considered. Mm. Yeah. Is that an open public process? Yeah. Well, another, <coughs> another part to it. Uh, in the current system, if we were to initiate the boundary amendment, we would need to go through just like any other private developer to the same process through the land use commission. Right. That's why it's me. Of it. Just the review of it. No, the review is fine, right? If you could come out with, Ravi said, recommendations that could allude to perhaps moving something from egg to conservation, right? And, but then, who would actually be the petitioner and to do all the background studies, the EAs, and all of that, right? It's just not, 
do the you know do the review Way and, then, and then change the boundary automatically. We would still have to go through the same process that any other applicant would need to go through. And that's where you know the last time they did a boundary review and then did have a lot of um, like a lot of analysis and a lot of the studies done, the background studies in order to submit a petition to the Lands Commission. That cost about a million dollars in 1992 dollars, mm -hmm. right? Uh, comparison today, my budget for my whole department of 20 plus planners is a million dollars. Just so, imagine how Mr. McCulley, who left, felt after being a very small property of 4.6 acres in one and a half million acres in conservation. So that very small guy spend like $100,000 simply trying to advance his application before the LUC. So you're talking about the LUC spending a million dollars. Well, that's 10% or 90% more than what he spent. But he is like 1,000 of 1% of the property of the law. It wouldn't be the LUC. The Land Use Commission is separate from us. Right. So OP would be just like an applicant. But remember, we're doing it. If we do the bond amendment, it's statewide. <coughs> we're doing a statewide study, not parcel by parcel. Understand? Okay. Um, yeah. I'm wondering if they're, if they're looking at incorporating climate change into some of the projections for shoreline erosion and shoreline management and so forth. Would you really turn that into a suggestion that that be something to consider? Yeah. Um, which kind of leads me to the question I was going to ask is, are there characteristics or functions of what you think an ideal land use system might operate like? You've already suggested one that there be scale, right? You've suggested the climate change being factored in. You also mentioned earlier um, there are some things about conservation that you think are done well. Yeah, is that right? Well, it's, it's fair. It's fair to everyone. It's not just what the biggest purse can afford. Mm -hmm. The review process has to be something that's open to everyone and fair to everyone. In particular, I struggle with PAR 205A3, A5. And this is in dealing with departments within the government. Par 205A6, Par 205A27, Par 205A28. All of those have to do with being able, as a property owner, as a stakeholder, whether it be the Sierra Club or myself, having equal access to have discussions with the departments in plain language, that's what's provided for in the law, to assist in proper, proper respecting of laws and power and the nature and all of this, everyone is supposed to, according to honor, be able to talk to all of the departments in the government informally. You don't have to. They'll respond to emails, they'll respond to phone calls, they'll work constructively with you to assist you through the development process of coastal lands. And I can tell you, after six months of experience, and when I was, I offered to my wife today to bring a truck so we could bring our documents in. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm talking about over a hundred pounds of documents where we've tried to ask questions and get answers. And it's bizarre what's going on in these departments today. That they, they don't respond. They request that you respond in writing, and then they email you back. They don't respond to telephone calls. Sometimes they do. When you specifically phone in and leave a message with an administrator of the department, you need to answer back. 
simply saying, not a, not raising an issue, just saying, call me back. Um, you cited a, a number of specific references. Are you going to leave us a copy yes. of the document? Okay, because I'm telling you, you don't have to get writer's okay. You don't have to frantically okay. write anything. Everything that I'm going to talk about is there. Okay. Corey, anything? Yeah, I'd like to see video testimony at the Land Use Commission, like we have at our county council meeting, to testify from all around the island. <coughs> Alternative ways to participate. More people, especially in Island. I mean, mm -hmm. to go to Honolulu for me, I, mean, I can't travel and most people can't afford it. Mm -hmm. Video conference. Oh, yeah. Video conference, easier access to participate. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's a desk to
So he came here as one person, and now we have several generations later, there's more people. So it's reasonable to expect that some development has occurred, because you're living here now. And presumably you have children that are either living here or in other jurisdictions where there's been expansion. Where we can't reasonably preserve everything as if nothing happened. Or, or it would be without us even here. I don't agree that there should be a whole lot of development. Well, let me try to really get us back on track. So, good conversation yeah. over at Granola Bar. Got it. <laughs> uh, are folks are quiet in the back. Any thoughts on what you think an ideal land use system might look like? I have a question for Earl. Um, do you think that the Hawaii board should be involved? Because like, um, they have like, um, issues on all the that said it is all right, that they have the right to a war, and it's not on um, use for the Department of Hawaii board. And the Department of Hawaii board is 203 acres. They're supposed to be allowed for the homesteaders to use the land, and like with the Department of Hawaii Homes, it's like not homesteading. Most of the land should be used like in prehistoric agriculture. So like those things need water, so like shouldn't they be a part as a state agency sitting at the table? In, in this process, you mean? Yeah. I mean, that's sort of... <coughs> well, yeah, Hawaii Homes, though, exempts themselves from <coughs> State Just because, like, um, I come from Kuru and you have like issues where uh, they use they take in, like their old wells and then starting to like uh, use state money to use the water to provide for different agent, uh, different landowners, but yet um, the Hawaiians have water rights which they haven't been exerted and. With the lawsuit of modern now they're releasing water into the streams for the power in the roads. And I think uh, our home should be at the table because uh, they represent the indigenous people of these lands. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure if I thought our team like this, but I would like to see in the system um, in terms of I went more support for local food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You articulated that perfectly. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if we can enter here where um, a large amount of agricultural zone land is actually rural. You know, and people are not using it for agriculture, mm -hmm. but they're too small little parcels mm -hmm. to be effectively used for anything other than, you know, maybe small scale nurseries. Mm -hmm. And um, so we don't get the services because it's supposedly ag land. Um, that rural people really need. You know, they need schools and ambulances and they need roads that are really affordable. So the, the fix would be? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying, I think it's um, worth looking at yeah. yeah. you know, how, how are egg lands being used and perhaps yeah. you would really look at that. Oh, yeah. I, yes. <laughs> In the boundary. In the boundary. Yes. No, um, is are, are you guys addressing anything with the current um, alignment? So as you said, all along we had, I guess, other uh, affiliates that's dealing with current legal issues of Hawaii's history with politics. I mean, is that with land? Is that not being a No, that's, that's not a part of this conversation. This is looking at you know, it's the law that was defined in 1961 and 62. Yeah, but then you're asking for a system of what working, but it was a system that already existed and that was already documented right. that was working, so I'm just kind of confused how to do process on, on something like this. So if you were to design, re redesign this process, what would it look like? Can you help me understand how it would be different than right this up? Um, I don't know, I mean, you guys, the state funds agricultural programs here to teach the AHABA system of an existing proper operating system, so I think we're here trying to discuss that dual process, right, of how would that work, so I'm just kind of confused. Mm -hmm. I mean, the relationship between what we do and the system. 
Well, you're talking yeah. about land division, yeah. you're talking about dividing <coughs> the sectors, right? I mean, there's no portions of conservation, then you got your seated, then you got your crown, and you know what I mean? There's a big gap, and there's a big time frame gap as well. So, and I can probably see the reason why we're having a lot of land complaints and issues is people can't answer the question. So, I'm wondering, you know, if it has been a concern. So, what you're telling me is not, and you're still pressing forward. Well, it's related but separate. Um, you know, the land use districts that we have are what they are. They're not based on at all on Aqua management system. So, you know, that. Uh, on the other hand, there's other planning efforts that are uh, looking at that watershed partnerships. Uh, Oahu has you know, started to do that kind of planning from, like, from the watershed down to the ocean. I'm talking just like land division, I mean, land ownership, I mean, title, you know what I mean? Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not a home yeah, owner, this is so I don't know. Uh, right. So I was just listening based off of um, the questions or concerns they, these um, owners do have, um, just related to uh, current concerns, and now we're talking about how we transition and what do we do to better these same systems. So I mean, and that's all they're asking. I mean, it's kind of confusing. I don't see a lot of people filling the seats here. Mm -hmm. But I just came from class at the university. We just talked about you know all the process anyway, so people are getting degrees on it. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's what I'm sorry. I'm just sure. kind of confused on how these stages either work together or separate. But again, if you guys in your ag right handbook, you guys do announce that there was an existing agricultural proper healthy system. So. Again, why wouldn't we go back to that then if you already recognize it so, and not support that, I guess. Yeah. What this state land use law basically is, 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 is a zone, is a zoning process. So you know, there's, there's a county zoning process that, you know, residential, commercial, and agriculture. And there's also an, a larger and overlying um, state zoning that only has four zones, basically. So it's a land use issue of what you can do with your land. So if you want to put, let's say, a hotel in the agricultural district that is not permissible and it should change it to the urban district kind of thing. And then it, once it's in the urban zone, then the county can further um, you know, zone it into different classes of residential, apartment, industrial, what have you. So it's sort of along those lines that um, is what we're doing, land use. What to supplement what he said a little bit to show you the extreme of government agencies in managing and conservation, which is, I think, one of those four departments that you're mm -hmm. at. Yeah. I recently sent $50 into the department for a permit to plant the fruit tree. And after much study, they got back to me and said, we can't approve it as applied. You haven't told us what you're going to do with the shovel full of dirt that you took out of the hole to plant a fruit tree. I think that's extreme management. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we're taking these notes down, but the management of conservation lands is not what Office of Planning is. But I saw an umbrella. Yep. I saw your name at the top and four divisions. I'm not sure who those guys answer to, but I came here believing they must answer to you because mm -hmm. I saw that same umbrella on your website. Mm -hmm. So who do they answer to? <clears throat> what we more so look at is when there are changes in the district, as opposed to uses within <coughs> the district. For example, if it's a use within the urban district, we really don't get involved because that's solely under the county's jurisdiction. If it's a use in the conservation district, again, solely within the Department of Land and Natural Resources. So do they have to do that? So who's there about so yeah, There's a land board, there's a land board, and above them, uh, there's also a government. Because I wrote the uh, 
I have a CUA. I wrote the chairman of the board and I said, I have concerns about the conduct of the staff within the department. And I've got pages of it. Contradictory, obstructive, just really bad stuff. I don't just mean because I'm complaining that it's affecting me. As a rule of law, it's just plain wrong. So I write to the board, the chairman of the board, and I say, I want to come to your next meeting on December 12th to talk about that. And I'm denied. So who is his boss? Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. know. It's the, what you bring up is, is clearly important and real and not it's going your way. Umbrella. It's not under our umbrella. You're, you're, you're interpreting that okay. diagram a little differently. That's not, those aren't the areas that we're in control of and manage and day to day. Those are the zones that you see on a map that the state has designated um, that we're looking at as just general groupings of land. So, so it's likely I should write the government. I don't know. I can't answer that. I mean, we could try and have staff look that up for you, but that's really outside of our purview. And I'm that's, sorry. I, I, that must be frustrating, too, because you came here for a reason. But um, I guess I want to head you off a little bit, though. We may not have the answers you want because it's not our Kuliana. Mm -hmm. But we're listening, and we'll see what we can do. Leo, did you stand up to yeah. tell them who the boss is? Yeah, the, <laughs> okay. the governor appoints the director of Land and Natural Resources, who is the chairperson of the board. Right, he also appoints the board members. So ultimately the governor. Small group, who answers to who? In Does the, the administrator of the board answer to the No, the administrator is like the staff. They're one division that has to present <coughs> uh, their findings or their analysis to the board. Right. The board are the decision makers. So does the administrator administrator answer to the governor? Or to the board. Wait, the administrator or the or the chairperson of the, the administrator of the department does he answer wait. to the board? Wait, wait, wait. You're, you're getting there's different levels. The administrator is the head of the division. Just like Rodney is the head of the division, right? And I oversee Rodney. Okay. So in your case, if you're talking about the OCCL administrator, mm -hmm. he reports to the director. Right, who is currently William Isla, right? And he's also the chairperson of the board because he sits on the board, along with four other members. I think they're geographic in nature, right? One from each county. Seven. Okay. Yeah, seven now with the with the change. And there's a couple of like a cultural practitioner and all of that, right? So, right, that's the hierarchy. And then the governor is above the director, or chairperson of the board of natural resources. Because he was appointed, right? The chairperson was appointed. The administrator is just a staffer. It's like a civil servant. He's right. He's right. So, but he, <laughs> he basically runs it all day. Yeah, just like, you know, if, um, if, if a CDUA permit impacted our forest reserve, right? It wouldn't be the OCCI administrator, it would be the Division of Forestry and Wildlife within the LNR. Who, you know, looks at an application and gives his findings, right? Plus and minuses, we have to put conditions, blah, blah, blah. And that all goes to the board, right? The board is the ultimate decision makers, right? Mm -hmm. uh, their decision is basically, right, that's appealable upwards, but not to the governor, right? That you're going to take it into court at that point. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try and recap what I've heard so far. When I was asking for you know, characteristics of an ideal system, sustainable agriculture, a fair process, a scalable process, uh, making sure the public has access to participate in the process, so video conferencing was a suggestion. Um, revisit the boundaries, you know, really how we're sex of land being used, is that appropriate? Um, continue to protect conservation lands. I think those are some kind of big themes. One more, Deborah. Well, I'm, I'm always interested in the balance of participation on the board in yeah. terms of the background and, and interests, special like, interests. Like the Land Use Commission itself. Exactly. Members. So maybe the financial interests, the development interests, the environmental interests, to get a better balance mm -hmm. of knowledge, background. Um, There's something specific you think's missing? Well, I think sometimes it's overrated. 
Too many developments. You have five developers oh, and the Sierra Club, <laughs> right? And the Outdoor Circle, which is basically the other Sierra Club. Well, okay, now so those, about, even those two interests are very you're similar. Talking about the task force. She's talking about the land use commission. Okay, okay. it is kind of all the same though. They mirror each other. It is. They. Pff, okay. It's all the same. We understand that they're they're appointed by the governor, and, and the governor sometimes has pressure to do something that mm -hmm. um, might mostly because some of them. Some of the money contributed to the governor is, is you know, considered and weighed. And so I just want to suggest that it um, <coughs> be better. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Also, um, based off of the board, is it based off of people saying experience or is it based off of some laws that they We're talking about the Land Use Commission? Yeah, like, I mean, yeah. what laws do the you operate on there to make these decisions based off of just yeah, the land use commission has uh, decision decision making criteria in chapter 205A statutory and also Hawaii administrative rules which kind of goes more into detail of the broad policy statement right, and statutes. So you want to know how uh, whether there's qualifications to be a commissioner. Wait, is that your question? Yeah. Or how do you make decisions? How do you make the decision? Yeah. Oh, how do you make the decision oh, is okay. using the decision making criteria in chapter 205. Right? So there's the broad items that they need to consider. And then it's supplemented by their particular HR 15 can't remember the number. 15 dash something. Um, and those they go into detail as far as if there's a broad criteria, like what specifically we should look at. Right? And then usually, right, for us, right, we look at those decision criteria and we make our findings known to the commission. If we have concerns over one item, our office does that, or let the land use division does, right? Because we're a party. Same thing for the counties, if we see something in that might conflict with decision-making criteria at the county, mm -hmm. right, level. They need to voice that to the commission, right, because that's all part of the information that they're gonna use to make their decision, right. Similar to the land board, <coughs> right, they have, I think it's like chapter 183 uh, C, is conservation lands, so they have decision-making criteria if you're gonna move uh, what's well, lands in, in conservation, and you're going to move it into subzones and the like, right? What should go into a subzone, which will determine what you can do in that subzone. And then they're supplemented <coughs> by their administrative rules for that particular department. Right? So there's this layer of items that everyone needs to go through, right? It, it's your typical decision making here. You look at it, uh, applicants are required to say how they meet or don't meet. Right? And then you have the check and balance of the state and county in, in terms of the Land Use Commission to make sure that what the applicant is saying right, matches up with what we feel you know, when we read the decision criteria, are, have they fully met those decision making criteria. Nelson, you, um, back to you, you seem to know about the LUC and how it's made up. Is there a particular perspective that you'd like to see on You said it's weighted in one way, so help us understand a more balanced way. Well, since the governor doesn't really answer to balance, I'm not sure how practical that is. He's responding to political pressures to appoint uh, people that grab his attention, either uh, because they're politically potent or have lots of money, have big projects that affect lots of land. Okay? So, yeah. So, I think there needs to be an awareness of policy makers that you need to balance that kind of pressure with what's happening to the future of the ag lands, of the conservation lands, mm -hmm. and things like that. So, well, just farmer. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, this is really <coughs> A stakeholder. That needs to be balanced is nice, but what's really helpful is that kind of thing. Sure. And that's holding with the issue that we have 
with the Water Commission right now. Yeah. Sierra Club's involved with the uh, National Park over in Coloma, uh, where they want somebody, uh, a body, the, the Water Commission, to look at the future because they're anticipating a lot of use of water that will affect the quality of their park. And I think, just to change the subject a little, there's two issues which I wish Office of Planning would come back in on. And that is the conversion of conservation land into industrial land. And that's the summit of Mount Akea. And right now, only DLNR is involved. And right now, they are placating the University of Hawaii, which has control of that. And so Sierra Club has joined with cultural practitioners to sue because the balance isn't there on the land board. The second issue is the conversion of uh, agricultural lands, rural lands, and conservation lands into industrial lands. And that's geothermal development. And uh, I, I think the legislature really mucked it up when uh, they took away contested case hearing rights for the public, the affected public, and um, um, took away geothermal subzones, which the DLNR spent 10 years putting in place. And um, those actions should be put back. Both of those things should be put back to give um, a better perspective of somebody buying into mm -hmm. conservation, agriculture, or um, rural lands that are subject to energy development. Um, so that's just my comment. Oh, thank you. Thanks for your answer. Something that's good. Um, it's just from listening to everything, it's, it's like, like this just um, mentions like real issues and things like that. And like the conservation are real issues and, and all of that. Whereas like, and your mission statement is like a real issue. But everything else is like all about process, process, process. So it's like we're only involved in process and it's a disconnect from your mission statement and real issues. Does that make sense? Everybody? Well, no, help me. Well, it's a disconnect from your mission statement. <coughs> so all we're talking about is how to do the process. Mm -hmm. Process, processing, we all have issues with the processing. But the mission statement isn't about processing. Mission so statement. like get back, you know, yeah, get you your mission care. statement together yeah. or change Protect, it. preserve, yeah. encourage development. Yeah, yeah. but we're all talking about processing, yeah. processing, the, processing. The, the process leads to that. So in other words, um, we have but while we're talking about the process, though, yeah. well, you should mention process, isn't it? So in total, what happens is when people want to change their district classification, yeah. the Land Use Commission takes a look at it and decides whether that is in the best interest of, of the state to make that reclassification. And so that process results in the mission statement to protect the you know, encourage development in areas best suited for the public. Right. So, but are we talking more about process in here? Yes, we're, we're talking about a specific land use process, process. that we're looking to get ideas about. Which is kind of disconnected, it seems to me. Yeah, I can see how From the mission I can see how that feels, it feels that way. Yeah. So, well, I think the problem is there needs to be a systematic approach that's not arbitrary. Mm. You know, that somebody can read before they buy a piece of land mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever they want to do mm -hmm. to know what they're getting into and to see exactly how it goes. It's going to be better for the Land Use Commission and for all the departments because then it's either yes or no. You know, here's the law. There is already laws, but the way that they're interpreted, interpreted is, is arbitrary and changes from day to day. You know, and so that's what's so strange. I, you know, we're really for protect on the lands. We want, you know, we love it here and we want it to be as well protected as possible. But if you if you, you know, with the people that are protecting it for all of us, for this community, we just need to know how that's going on and how we can depend on the What's consistent, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And let me let me do it on it. I just wanted to say one more word of support for the contested case.
necessary process. Yeah. It was um, it was initiated in 1995, and there's been several really important um, issues that have been brought to the floor as a result of public participation. So that's one element. Um, I think it's worth keeping. I've heard the suggestion of having a public advocate yeah. on the LUC to represent the public's interest. Yeah. So it's someone who has time to do the research and get all the facts. There's all kinds of people upset, like these guys, and, but it's hard to gather all mm -hmm. the facts. So someone whose job it is to do that. And, and so you've heard about that, and you're saying that's a great idea? or No, it sounds interesting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And another thing I wanted to build on what he was saying a little about the off I can't say it right, I'm sorry. Um, uh, but so I've heard of people like they're trying to restore, say, a Hawaiian fish pond, but to really restore it, you have to worry about all the stuff that's coming down from upslope, but then the way our land is provided is it's not, it's all chopped up, and you can't control what's coming down from upslope. So I don't know how to solve that, but it's something to think about how you know, as they keep saying, whatever happens on the mountain comes down to the ocean. And then there's also people that maybe they, um, especially on this island, there's a great deal of people on these like sustainable communities and they'll have a group doing something unusual. It's not a single family home. They um, have a bunch of people mm -hmm. sharing land and doing things in very different ways. And so again, um, it doesn't fit into the way the land is chopped up right now. Looking at ways to allow an you know, alternate sub lifestyle, maybe even more sustainable lifestyles. Right now, you, the planning assumes that you have a car mm -hmm. and you can drive it many miles, mm -hmm. but some people um, are just content to stay in their area <coughs> and um, try to you know, not burn a lot of fossil fuel and produce their own food and get a lot of their research, you know, what they need right from right the land right around there. So there's ways to make that easier to do. I, I respect what you're saying about this is your department and there are these other departments that you can't affect. So as a suggestion, I recognize that you've had this mandate that every five years you're supposed to do something that you haven't been doing. And I would suggest that my experience in resources isn't a lot different than if I was doing what Jim did, trying to develop a plan for your department. And I would ask that you respect 205-827-C, that you recognize that the person coming through the door with a plan to develop their property is equally <coughs> a member of the public whose interest that you're supposed to be representing also. In other words, in a neutral way, you're representing both parties. And that that person coming through the door should have the benefit, according to law, early in the life cycle, and in terms understandable to them, don't quote the law, help them develop their plans. Don't quote law, only write me with a signed letter, don't email me, don't phone me, because that happens. And, and no, I'm asking them in their department to simply address those issues if they're not already addressed. Well, I always return every phone call, every email that I get. Well, we've had a great reception of planning here. I have, to, I have to say, these guys here have been fantastic. And it's like night and day between planning and OCCL. But we have to deal with OCCL. So that's our life, you know. They understand the rules. They explained it to us. And we wouldn't even know that these rules exist. And they say, well, we feel so bad that you have to yeah. deal with it. But that's the way it goes. Um, any other suggestions for an ideal menu system? If we're starting to go back to <coughs> ourselves a little bit, that's good because that means it's important. But looking for some fresh ideas. Hands up. Um. Just in any due diligence, I mean, um, has there, there been a process of um, just like anything, ownership, um, you only take kuleara and something is when there is ownership of that basis. Um, where, 
have, have that been provided for that new diligence process of like that land division? I mean, I was, I was wondering on how, how does that work? Because um, I mean, to yeah, even, yeah. To, to be responsible for something, right, you have to show how you, you are responsible for it. Um, I've, I haven't found anything on the guys' website or any website on that portion yet. Um, you know, we're still dealing with those issues. Again, the conservations mm -hmm. and districts and how ownership is. So, will that be available soon? Or I'm, not, I'm not quite understanding. Let me understand the ownership piece. Um, like, yeah. Well, because you, um, based off of this, something. Um, just on the land divisions, yeah. I guess, I, again, ownership, we're seeing the scale of the the grouping, the time frame. I'm still trying to, I'm confused in understanding. Um, well, there's a, what you see on that map, there's a lot of different owners, and really what that is supposed to be a snapshot of is just how those um, lands are zoned. There's four different categories, so it's not so much ownership, it's just a snapshot of, you know, this is your island, this is how much is ag, this is how much is conservation, this is rural, etc. So, so we aren't guys, getting into the level of ownership, I mean, to do that, you know, Correct, but some of them still oversees that whole big section, right? In, in, in the sense of management, right? Mm -hmm. um, who, who upholds those contracts that breaks up those pieces, right? It might be a lot of different parties. I mean, it's not so, a single owner. Only if you're changing the district, then that, that's what the Land Use Commission gets involved in. Within the districts that you want to do something, it could be the county, mm -hmm. Could be the Department of Land and Natural Resources. It depends on what what use you're proposing and whether it's allowed in that district. And then you may need to change. Uh, in, for major projects, a lot of times they do need to go to the Land Use Commission. So in Kodasai in particular, so a lot of the big developments there need to come to the Land Use Commission because uh, in order to do there is they have to change it. <coughs> Agricultural conservation to urban, so that that's where that, that comes in. But if you're within already an urban area, um, it's a strictly county issue that. Brings so are they required, just like anything else, to get um, to make sure the ownership and all that stuff is clear of title? Yes, yeah, so the process is, of course, is in order to even start processing, you know, you need to show uh, landowners uh, verification. Ownership. Oh, okay. okay. Or at least the consent of the landowner. <coughs> if you're not the landowner. Okay. Anything else? Okay. We're, we're new here. And this is an observation, and it probably isn't directly in LUC. Mm -hmm. so this has nothing to do with conservation. So we, we go around and look at properties with realtors. And I would say between 60 and 70 percent of the properties have unpermitted structures on them. And we invariably start to ask, why is that? And they said the process is so onerous and so difficult compared to anywhere else. You just throw up your hands and extend your lanai, put in a hot tub, do this, do that. Generally speaking, if you're looking at properties that 60 percent of them have unpermitted things on them. What's wrong with the system? Mm -hmm. So I think it needs to be looked at. It's, it's the big guy and the little guy all going in trying to do the same thing, and the burden is the same on both of them, and a lot of little guys just rub their hands and do it anyway. recently that compared San Jose, California and uh, Houston, Texas. And they were talking about the price of homes and, and for the general population to be able to afford a home. And they said, well, in San Jose it's this and in Houston it's this. And we're talking about orders of seven times more. 
And then they compare the process mm -hmm. of use of those labs, okay. applications, mm -hmm. permits. They said San Jose since 2008 had 170 new home permits issued. And Houston, and if you can forgive me on the number, I'm not way off. It was like 200,000 new homes. Mm -hmm. And the burden of application was compared, and it exactly mirrored the process. But that's not necessarily a good thing. Well, so, yeah. moved to Texas. <laughs> that's what you're after. children that are growing up in this area, as I talked before. It's a cumbersome process. It needs to be examined. Yeah, and, and people are concerned about their children having homes that they can afford, and having jobs, and the community to, to grow. And everyone equally has concerns about the concrete jungle. And those are both fair concerns. So the it requires balance, and Hawaii does not have balance. And I think what you're also saying is that it's not an impossible task. There are places that are doing their job. That's right. Um, so I'll remind you that uh, we're in kind of the beginning stages of the conversation. This goes on for a while. We're doing more public outreach. We've got to do a lot of writing and synthesis of what we're hearing. We will be putting out a draft which is another opportunity for people to weigh in. Um, so stay tuned. And can you leave us your document? And I have one other request that yes. all departments, whether it be conservation or your department, keeps stakeholders. Everyone has an email address and an uh -huh. address. Uh -huh. And if there's something new coming down the pipe that's going to affect my land and me, I would like to know about it before mm -hmm. there's a public hearing okay. two days later. <coughs> So early, I, early I early think the Sierra Club would like that too. Early yeah, early with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There are rules about that, but they're very, very minuscule. You have to yeah. live within 500 feet of the development in order to be, yeah, for the most part. If you don't or 1,500, some, some of them. Between 300, yeah. Yeah. 300 and 1,000. There you go. Yeah. Thank you, Amy. Yes. 300 yeah. feet. Yeah. Yeah. You know how far that is. Well, I'm concerned if it's. They're never going to notify me. I live at the top of Kalmana. There are seven miles of Wayanui Nui between me and the shoreline. I don't get notified about any of it. So the official bulletin board is across the hall at the county building and whatever their website is, and you have to check it every day. Welcome to Hawaii. Well, I, I easily get on BLNR's website to get mailings about, mm -hmm. emailings mm -hmm. about everything that's going on, except when it has to do with me. Okay. All right. So, thank you. Yeah. It's been very much a learning night for me. Thank you for sharing. Um, take more water. Take more snacks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.